unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension, a dimension of spin, a dimension of lies, a dimension of wishful thinking. You're moving into a land of shadow without substance of rhetoric and slogans. You've just crossed over into the Obama zone. <laughs> The mistake of my first trip was thinking that this job was just about getting the policy right. But the, the nature of this office is to tell a story to the American people. You've just crossed over into the Obama zone. These are the steps that we must take. There are plenty of steps we can take right now right now to start getting our economy back on track to help create jobs and grow this economy if we are going to deal with our dependence on foreign oil if we're going to end our dependence on foreign oil we'll recruit an army of new teachers i want to recruit an army of new teachers make college affordable make college more affordable and solar and wind and biodiesel solar and wind and biodiesel can repair our crumbling roads and bridges. We've got crumbling roads and bridges. In a time when so many people are struggling to keep up. A moment when so many people are still struggling. Finally meet the challenges that we face as a nation. As we look ahead to the challenges we face as a nation. This is our time to put our people back to work. To put more people back to work. Tonight, more Americans are out of work. We still got friends out there and family. We're looking for work. More of you have lost your homes. All across America, there are homes that are still underwater. We all know America's going through tough times right now. Uh, we, we've gone through some tough times. We will rise or fall. We rise and fall as one nation. As one nation. As one people. As one people. But it's time to realize that we are in this together because I believe we're all in it together. That America is a place where you can make it if you try. A place where you can make it if you try. Because I believe in you. Because I believe in you. Your hopes. Your hopes. Your dreams. Your dreams. Knock on some doors for me. Knock on doors with me. And make some calls for me. And make phone calls with me. If you are willing to work with me, if you're willing to work even harder in this election, then I promise you, then I promise you, I promise you change will come. Obama, 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 Obama. Good evening, Mr. Obama. Listen, sir, uh, how long have you been drinking? Ian? Oh, sorry, sorry, he's not supposed to be drinking that on camera. Sir, how long uh, have you been drinking E&J for, sir? I don't know, since I was about seven. Okay, okay, okay. Now, why is it that you can't wipe that why is that smirk off of your face? <laughs> <laughs> just watched Critter TV, episode three, season two. Okay. Now, how do you feel about Critter TV in general, sir? I feel like Critter TV, to be on instead of my speeches on the news. Okay. <laughs> you look a lot taller in person, sir, actually. I didn't know that you wore V-necks and or gold chains. <laughs> well, I'm in the hood, so oh, okay. I gotta blend in. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, see what's so, I don't see what's so funny, Critter. Sir, how do you feel about beating um, Mr. McCain over here out in a landslide victory? I believe McCain is a hater. Okay. <laughs> and that's all I got to say about that. Mr. McCain. Stop. Listen, man, I really don't fuck with Obama. Like <laughs> Election over, we going to keep it real. He old, he Obama's finito, man. See, one thing about Obama, he ain't put the work in that I put it. Check the footage, man. I went to war. I did all of that. Obama, how do you feel about the whole Kanye West interrupting Taylor Swift's um, award ceremony? He's jackass. <laughs> Are you allowed to say jackass on TV, sir? Say what the fuck I want to say. <laughs> Obama, how do you feel about being the first president in the White House to have a Caesar? Oh! A Caesar haircut. How do you feel about that, sir? Oh, the number two all the way around. Um, I feel like I need an edge up at some point during my, uh, you know, television appearances. <laughs> I can come see Critter for that at Line em Up Barbershop. Yes, thank you, for that. thank you for that plug, sir. Do you get your eyebrows wet, Obama? It looks like it. It's like <laughs> Why do you only have top teeth, like sir? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yo. Hey, yo. I'll be on the block when I move to Grams. Uh -huh. I got that bass so raw, I'll throw it in that perf and fiends do the Superman. You! <laughs> See me with that thing cut. 
I pull it back once and shoot it in his mouth like a slingshot. Ladies and gentlemen, the next president of the United States Obama of America, TV. Barack Obama, 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 Call him president, he's the next new president. He is senator from Illinois. Yeah, his criteria compared to John McCain. This isn't fair, cause he's BLAC. Where the fuck is Critter at? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. Oh shit. Go for me, nigga! <laughs> I'm the president, bitch! So he writes oh, legislation with the country on his mind and he don't cope fish cause he ain't got time every second minute hour KKK wanna devour He got guards ready to pop him with their chick 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 choppers Every brother, mother, sister, cousin, grandma wanna Nothing illustrates America's breakdown like the way the president's hometown celebrates its holidays Memorial Day, 12 dead, 56 wounded The 4th of July, 10 dead, 53 wounded. Labor Day, nine dead, 46 wounded. This kind of third world carnage has become absolutely normal. If the president held a press conference every time multiple people were murdered by criminal gangbangers with illegal guns in Chicago, we'd hear from him almost every day. Instead, he says nothing. And the untold secret in Washington is that he has all the laws he needs to stop the bloodshed now. Under the existing federal gun laws, he could take every felon with a gun, drug dealer with a gun, and criminal gangbanger with a gun off the streets tomorrow and lock him up for five years or more. But he won't do it. His Justice Department won't do it. And the media never ask why. So convicted gangbangers carry illegal guns because they fear rival gangs more than they fear being prosecuted for a gun charge. Every police officer on the streets in cities like Chicago, Baltimore, and Detroit knows what it's like to get called to a murder scene knowing full well who did it because the killer was in the back of their car yesterday or last week. Thugs like Darius Brown who was supposed to be serving a 10-year sentence for second-degree felony robbery, but got let off with five years probation. So he was free to roam the streets and kill a nine-year-old girl while she was doing her homework. If you wanna stop violent crime, and I know you do, take violent criminals off the street. Prosecute them under the current federal gun laws and make sure they don't get to their next crime scene. That's the way to save lives. If the president held a press conference tomorrow morning and directed every federal jurisdiction to round up every felon with a gun, drug dealer with a gun, and criminal gangbanger with a gun, law enforcement would have thousands of violent thugs in handcuffs and squad cars by sundown. Instead, he waits for a crime that fits his agenda and blames the NRA. Mr. President, we will not accept blame for your failure. The NRA has demanded the strongest possible prosecution of the federal gun laws for over 20 years. Our repeated calls have been met by deafening silence from the Washington elites. President Obama and Hillary Clinton and other politicians use the carnage to campaign for more gun laws. They won't and don't enforce. And the good, honest Americans living out in farm towns in Nebraska or Oklahoma, or working two jobs in inner city Chicago or Baltimore, people who keep their heads down, raise their kids, and just try to do the right thing, they see through it all. We've lived through the Clinton administration's utter lack of federal gun prosecutions, and the Obama administration is following suit while the country suffers. And we know that a second Clinton administration will just mean more the same. Americans have no tolerance for violent thugs, 
no tolerance for the politicians who enable them, and no tolerance for a media that devotes endless time to new gun laws, but won't even ask why we don't enforce the existing federal gun laws we already have. No organization has been louder, clearer, or more consistent on the urgent need to enforce the federal gun laws than the NRA. And in the face of mounting political and media pressure to demean, shame, and silence us, we will fight. If you have had enough of the dishonest debate, if you're sick and tired of politicians blaming you and your guns for their failure, demand truth and justice. Stand and fight with the NRA. Something is triggered in my head, and I suddenly start seeing, as I say in this passage, a new map of the world. Uh, a couple of other notes of explanation. As I work through this anger, this sense of betrayal, uh, I discover that I'm feeling that same sense of betrayal from my family. It all starts coming together. And some of the characters in the book, there will be Gramps, in this passage, rather. Uh, Gramps is my grandfather. Uh, Toot is my grandmother. Uh, that's short for Tutu, which in Hawaii means grandmother. At the time, when I was born, she decided she was too young to be called Granny, so or Grams, so we called her Toot. And the passage finally ends with me having a conversation with a close friend of my maternal grandfather, a close friend of Gramps, a black man from Kansas named Frank, uh, actually a, a, at the time a fairly well-known poet uh, named Frank Marshall Davis who had moved to Hawaii and lived there. Uh, and so I have a discussion with him about the kinds of frustrations I'm having and, and uh, he sort of schools me on uh, that I should get used to uh, these frustrations. So let me... Welcome to CTV. I am Dick Fitzwell and he is a big dick. <laughs> Don't look at the screen. I'm gonna look at you. 1990. Gas prices, weather. <laughs> Welcome to CTV. I am Dick Fitzwell. <laughs> I get that. That accent is too good. <laughs> TV. Michael, I hear you f***ing laughing. Oh, I hear it that time too. In today's program, we will be talking about taxes. A <laughs> boot! <laughs> we will be talking about taxes. <laughs> You got me laughing about the bullshit. We'll be talking about toxins. <laughs> oh my god! Why is he gonna say a boo? <laughs> yo, listen. The best thing to do is, yo, y your whole thing is check this out. A medicine idol born their jumpers. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Global warming. <laughs> Yo, I changed my accent. Does my mustache look good? Does it look like this? Because I got it from here. Okay, fuck it. He put him in the basement. <laughs> Okay, you're the lead anchor. This is going to be great for the blooper reel. Oh. I was wondering, did y'all know that President Obama admits that he used to support an ISIS? I know that this is for reals because it shows a video clipping of Obama speaking and he's saying that he support ISIS and it's coming directly out of his mouth. You know, if he's supporting ISIS, that means he's giving them financial support and he's training them. And that's not good. There was some fake news reports, I guess, that were saying that they were going after ISIS. 
which doesn't make any sense why the news would say that they were trying to bomb ISIS and all this kind of garbage if Obama comes out and says he's supporting them. That don't make any sense, does it? I really do think the news media has been uh, misleading a lot of people, you know, because I actually thought that they were attacking ISIS and trying to stop ISIS, but how is that possible if Obama is supporting them and training them and funding them? You know, this is making a lot of sense if you think about it, because they're going from city to city and they're taking over these cities and then they're beheading and killing uh, Christians. You know, that makes a lot of sense because that's what the New World Order agenda is all about anyhow. And a lot of y'all are like, no, that's not going to happen. This is not true. You know, it's fake. You know, the media likes to lie. Well, I can understand if the media was the one reporting and it didn't come out of Obama's mouth, but it actually shows Obama saying this and it's coming directly out of his mouth. And this is going to happen here in the United States too, just so y'all know. If Obama's supporting it, you can guarantee it's going to happen here too. A lot of people are wondering, how is this possible? How is this going to happen? You know, Obama has a lot of supporters because he's uh, supporting the LGBT, the homosexual community. Those people are very grateful for everything that, you know, he's done for them. So Obama could sit there and pass some ridiculous, um, crazy law. And just because, um, you know, they got help, you know, to be able to marry and, you know, do, you know, do what they wanted, they're going to support this ridiculous ideal just because you know it's kind of like you know you scratch my back I scratch your back not only does he have those people on his side but he also has those people that like to smoke dope you know they they're like loving Obama right now because it's becoming legal to have marijuana in a lot of different states now and then you have the supporters of people that were in prison for long periods of time for doing like crimes of you know selling and possessing cocaine and you know, stuff like that. He's uh, letting them free. He's setting them free. He says the punishment's too harsh for them, and he's going to set them free. You know, so he does have a lot of supporters. You know, he's probably setting them free to make more room in the prison, so that way whenever, you know, martial law is called and they're coming in and picking up Christians, you know, they have room for, for them in the prison system. There's even people that are uh, wanting to abort their child at any time during their pregnancy and there's some people that want to abort a child up to the age of two which is crazy but they're thinking about that you know so those people are supporting Obama so yes he has a lot of supporters and these supporters are going to back him up on anything that he does even if it sounds crazy you know they're going to back him up because like I said before you know Obama scratched their back these people are going to scratch his back and another thing I want to point out is there are a lot of uh, gays and lesbians that hate Christians they really have a hatred towards Christians because anytime they hear the name of Jesus Christ it convicts them in their heart and they feel guilty for being a homosexual or they feel guilty for being a transgender they feel guilty for being bisexual you know they have conviction in their heart whenever they just hear the name of Jesus and so you know of course they're gonna hate Christians because when they they see the, a Christian or they hear um, a Christian speaking about the Lord they're feeling conviction these homosexuals they hate Christians with a passion and you know they even do terrible things at their gay pride parade that's very disrespectful like they had this cross and they had a transgender man up on the cross and then they had two uh, gay men and they were trying to dress like Jesus and they were making out with one another so these people have a great disrespect for the Christian community these homosexual people are getting really really very wicked at a um, protest that these parents are trying to protest that their kids in school would not be you know learning about homosexual lifestyles at a kindergarten age um, these homosexuals were very upset so they took human feces and they were chunking it at the Christian community so you know to me that's disgusting and that is as really that is as low as you can get I've even had some comments from a few homosexual people on my YouTube channel and their comments aren't very nice like they say stuff like I wish you would die if I could I would kill you um, you know just like death threats type stuff or you know just 
wishing that I was dead, that kind of stuff. So if they have that kind of hatred and they have that kind of feelings towards us, if Obama was to say, let's all kill the Christians, you know, and it's going to be a, a law that, you know, if the Christians don't change their ways and comply with our laws, then they will be beheaded or whatever. These uh, homosexuals are going to be the first people that's going to side up with Obama and, and be in agreement with it. I can already hear them saying, well, they deserve it. Um, yeah, kill them. We don't need people like that. You know what I'm saying? That's what they're going to be saying. Of course Obama's going to be bold in his statement because he already knows he's got a bunch of people that's going to back him up because he already scratched their back and they kind of like owe him one, I guess. But yeah, he knows. He knows these people are going to back him up. He knows that um, this homosexual people are going to be the first ones that are going to call for Christians to be slaughtered. Now, I'm not going to say that every homosexual out there is going to have that kind of attitude because uh, my sister, she's a homosexual. She knows it's wrong. I've been telling her it's wrong. I'm trying to reach out and help her, but, you know, I have, to, I have to also respect her free will. So, you know, I can't force anybody, but I do pray for her. But she knows what's going on, and she tells me she would never wish that a Christian would be killed or anything like that, you know. So there is some out there that are homosexuals that don't have that hateful uh, attitude, and I do know that. But the majority, they do have that attitude. You know, they are purposely targeting Christians. You know, like, for instance, they're looking for a wedding cake. They could go anywhere in the world to get a wedding cake, but they know that there's a, you know, sweet little church little group that's making cakes, you know, down the road. So they want to go to there to try to get their wedding cake made because they're on purposely trying to start trouble. Well, the sad thing is there was a group of Christians that was at Starbucks. They were they were paying customers, and they had their signs, you know, because they were street preaching, and um, they had their signs laying beside them. They were you know trying to take a break and use the restroom and get something to drink, and they noticed that the signs were about Jesus and stuff like that. So. The Starbucks person was offended by all the signs, you know, and he went up to the people and told them that they had to leave the, the store and was trying to refuse them service. And the thing is, these Christians, they weren't going in there to deliberately start trouble. They went in there because they really was seriously, you know, trying to take a break, get something to drink, and go to the restroom. But since they were Christians, you know, Starbucks didn't like that and they wanted to refuse them service and, and tell them they're not allowed on their property. But the thing is, these Christian people didn't make a big deal out of it. Yeah, they might have made a YouTube video about it, but they didn't go as far as, you know, getting a lawyer. As far as I know, they don't have a lawyer to try to, you know, get them for discriminating. You know what I'm saying? But anytime a person that's a homosexual, if they get discriminated against, they're right there getting them a lawyer and they're trying to um, sue their pants off people. So if you have eyes to see what's going on, then you will see the um, all this is unfolding, and it's unfolding in a very um, negative way. Because Obama's supporting ISIS, he's supporting the slaughter of Christians. You know that's what he's supporting, and then he's already got the homosexual people already very angry with Christians because they feel that um, you know we judge them just because the Bible says that they're living in a sin and it's an abomination what they're doing which is the truth what they are doing is an abomination to God and it is a sin but they don't want to hear that and so they want to they want to silence the Christians and if they want to silence us what's the best way to silence us they're going to try to kill us they're going to try to behead us this is coming you know and um, Obama's right there leading this whole thing. He's the leader of ISIS. You know, he's the one that's telling them to what to do and training them. And, and he's the one that's uh, giving them money and supporting them. And so if he's supporting them, then he knows that they're killing Christians. And he's going to have them here soon to do the same thing to us. Well, the New World Order is coming, and ISIS is part of it. Us Christians, we're going to be targeted, and we need to stand strong. And we got to remember that, um, you know, during the end times, it does say that Christians will be prosecuted and hated, you know, for the, the name of Jesus. So remember, this is, this is all end time Bible prophecies. 
The Bible said this was going to happen. And don't be afraid. I'm not making this video to try to scare you. If you're feeling afraid, then you need to get on your knees and pray to the Lord Jesus. Ask Jesus to take that fear from you. Because when you have Jesus in your heart, you have nothing to fear. And if you do have fear after hearing this video, what I had to say, well, I'm not going to say you don't have Jesus in your heart. I just have to say that maybe you need to call, call on Jesus and ask him to take that fear from you. I can't read your heart. Only God can read your heart. So just get on your knees and ask Jesus to take the fear from you. And that's another thing. They'll even have the atheists on Obama's side too. You know, so he's got the atheists, he's got the uh, homosexuals, and both those two groups really, really hate Christians. And then you, you also have the uh, people that, you know, he pulled out of prison, and then you have the people that are big supporters of killing babies. So all these people will be on his side whenever he goes to start slaughtering us Christians, and they're going to support him. And there's going to be a lot of those people supporting him. And then you'll have those people that aren't really supporting him, but they're too quiet. They're going to sit in the background and just let it happen. They're too afraid to speak up. You'll have people like that. And there might be a lot of people like that, you know, that don't agree, but they're too scared to speak up. And they're just going to sit there and let it happen. So, if you know, if you're one of those people, please wake up, you know, and, um, you know, try to do what you can to help other people you know so don't be afraid to stand up and speak up well I just wanted to share this with y'all um, looks like things are speeding up they're talking about um, you know the Antichrist is coming soon and they already have the red heifer um, I already knew that they had a red heifer but I didn't know they needed more than one so apparently they got more than one red heifer now and they're going to start building the third temple. So yes, things are speeding up and Obama's becoming very bold nowadays and he's not afraid to admit that he's supporting a, a terrorist group that kills Christians and innocent children. You know, so y'all need to wake up. Our time is short and Jesus is coming soon. Repent and keep your garments clean and I love you all. God bless you. All right, bye. I'd also like to add that if you would like to download this video and use it anywhere that you want, including your YouTube channel, that is okay by me. And even if you want to trim this little area off right here, that's fine with me too. And God bless you all. I love you and bye-bye. Was moving too slowly, but the fall of Ramadi has galvanized the Iraqi government. So with the additional steps I ordered last month, we're speeding up training of ISIL forces, including volunteers from Sunni tribes in Anbar province. Ten very strange things that have happened in just the past few weeks. My Conspiracy Club, July 9, 2015. Have you noticed that events have begun to accelerate? Over the past few weeks, things have officially started to get very weird. Chinese stocks are crashing, the Greek debt crisis is spiraling out of control. The New York Stock Exchange was down for about four hours on Wednesday thanks to a technical glitch, and global politicians have been acting very strangely. After several years of relative calm, could it be possible that the second half of 2015 will usher in a time of chaos and confusion on a worldwide scale? Personally, I have never been more concerned about a period of time as I am about the last six months of 2015. And if I am right, what we have seen so far is just the tip of the iceberg. The following are 10 very strange things that have happened in just the past few weeks. Number 1. On Wednesday, the New York Stock Exchange, United Airlines and the Wall Street Journal were all taken down by unexpected technical glitches. Authorities are assuring us that hackers were not responsible for any of this. Number 2. In China, a full-blown stock market crash is unfolding. The Shanghai Composite Index has plummeted more than 30% in less than a month, and the Chinese version of the Nasdaq has dropped by more than 40%. The amount of paper wealth that has been lost in China is 15 times greater than the GDP of Greece. Number 3. Just the other day, hackers were able to hack into a German surface-to-air missile battery. Well. This is absolutely terrifying. According to the local, hackers attacked a German Patriot surface-to-air missile battery, like the one shown above, stationed along the Turkish-Syria border. 
the cyber attack caused the battery to carry out unexplained orders. It's believed that cyber attackers managed to exploit the Patriot battery in two different ways. The first exploit was through the sensor shooter interoperability, which controls interactions between the actual, physical missile launcher and its control system, while the other was on the guidance chip. These weaknesses could have allowed the hackers to steal data or, more worryingly, actually take control of the battery. Number 4. Earlier this week, Barack Obama told reports that we're speeding up training of ISIL forces. Number 5. Just a few days ago, the U.S. Mint announced that they were sold out of American Eagle silver coins on the exact same day that the price of silver hit a new low for 2015. How does that make any sense? Number 6. On June 30, an unexpected blood moon was seen over a significant portion of the United States. This also happens to be the exact day when the Supreme Court gay marriage decision came out. The following is an excerpt from a recent article by Caden Cowger. On June 30, 2015, a surprise blood moon appeared in the sky, that was only seen in the United States. According to the National Weather Service, large wildfires in Canada have been burning. Due to extremely high winds, smoke from these fires have traveled into the United States. According to NBC Chattanooga, the smoke should remain in the higher atmosphere and not affect air quality, it gives the moon and sun a rosy glow. Here's what causes the effect. As light from the moon or sun enters the atmosphere it gets scattered by particles like water, aerosols, and in this case smoke. Green, blue, and purple colors are sent in all directions but colors with longer wavelengths like red. Orange and yellow continue through the atmosphere and remain visible to the human eye. Number 7. Even though NASA recently stated that they know of no asteroid or comet currently on a collision course with Earth and that no large object is likely to strike the Earth any time in the next several hundred years, NASA has teamed up with the National Nuclear Security Administration to try to figure out a way to use nuclear weapons to destroy asteroids that are threatening our planet. If there is no threat, why spend so much time and energy on this? Number 8. A couple of weeks ago, we learned that Barack Obama has issued 19 secret directives. What is Obama planning, and why won't he let the general public know about it? Number 9. This week, Pope Francis called for the creation of a new economic and ecological world order where the goods of the earth are shared by everyone, not just exploited by the rich. So exactly what would such a world order look like? Number 10. The Greek people just overwhelmingly voted to reject austerity, so EU officials have responded by giving the Greek government a one-week deadline to come to an agreement that will include even more austerity for the Greek people. If the Greek government does not submit, EU officials are threatening them with bankruptcy, the collapse of their banking system and expulsion from the euro. Things promise to only get stranger from here. One week from today, on July 15, a massive military exercise known as Jade Helm begins. More than 1,000 members of the U.S. military will be taking part in drills that will be conducted in the states of Texas, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, Utah, California, Mississippi and Florida. Then in September comes the end of the Shemitah year, the fourth blood moon of this tetrad the launch of a radical new sustainable development agenda at the United Nations that is being endorsed by the Pope, and a vote on a UN Security Council resolution that would formally establish a Palestinian state. And that is just the stuff that we know about. So what do you think we should expect from the rest of this year? Please feel free to join the discussion by posting a comment below. Michael Snyder is the publisher of the Economic Collapse blog, the American Dream blog and the truth. You can follow him on Twitter right here. Look up what CERN is. CERN began in the 1950s as the European Organization for Nuclear Research. Today it is also known as the European Laboratory for Particle Physics. It is one of the world's most prestigious research centers. Its business is fundamental physics, finding out what makes our universe work, where it came from and where it is going. At CERN, 
Some of the world's biggest and most complex machines are used to study nature's tiniest building blocks, the fundamental particles. By colliding these minute particles of matter physicists unravel the basic laws of nature. This is running today too. CERN is doing collisions like never before, releasing black energy and black matter. Jesus is coming soon. Get ready. And repent. We need to keep our garments clean. God bless you all. Big hugs.